We are in the beautiful country of Namibia, and this episode takes us to Noah Sonneba's safaris, about three hours southeast of Vintuk. We've met up with Reg Grant from Archer's Edge, and his wife, three times national archery champion, Luzon Grant. Over the following two days, we plan to be out on foot, walking and stalking through the Kalahari in search of one of Africa's most majestic antelope species, the sable. And of course, along the way, we'll be bumping into all kinds of other species too. After a two hour flight from South Africa and a drive from Vintuk Airport, we arrive at Nua Sanibus Lodge and begin to settle in. The landscape in Namibia might be wild and rugged, but the lodge is very comfortable and spacious. Quite a contrast. We spend an hour or so checking the place out and getting to know our host, Worm Justice. But as with any hunt, preparation is extremely important and so the bows come out and Luzon prepares to take a few shots on target to make sure nothing was bumped out or damaged during transit. If any of you have bow hunted before, you'll know that you can't become a good bow hunter overnight. Hours and hours of preparation and practice have to take place before you can even think of heading out on a hunt, especially when doing a walk and stalk hunt, which could be regarded as the most difficult form of hunting you could do in Africa. Luzon stretches out the range to see what the wind is doing to the arrow at different distances and once she's happy we hop on the back of the bucky and head off for an evening drive. With the winter sun starting to dip quite low, we decide to leave the hunting for the next morning and just enjoy a game drive as we soak in all that this beautiful country has to offer. It's crazy to think that such a dry part of the world could be home to such a huge variety of animals, and yet they thrive here in their thousands as they have for millennia, and this is largely due to excellent game management and sustainable hunting. It really is a beautiful thing to witness. Our day starts long before sunrise as we head out on foot into an area where we'd spotted the sable the previous day. Reg is a professional hunter with plenty of experience and he leads Luzon and myself through the bush. We keep on moving slowly, stopping every few meters to glass around us but unfortunately the sable bull we're after is nowhere in sight and as the sun begins to peak above the horizon we head back to the truck. As the sun begins to warm everything up, we begin to see animals emerging to sun themselves in the open and after about an hour we suddenly spot a sable bull in the distance. So we just allocated the sable we're after. It took us quite some time to locate it. Um, we decided to have a quick picnic next to the tree here and uh, just wait for it to get calm, sort of lose the interest of us. And then we'll have to put in a proper stalk, a uh, leopard crawl, to get close within shooting range. It's quite open. Um, hopefully it moves off into a thicker part where it's um, uh, more bush and scrub that we can hide behind. But where it's at now, it's not in a great position for us, so we're just setting it out, um, taking our time. We want to get the perfect opportunity. 
takes about 20 minutes for the sable to relax and forget about us, but eventually he begins to move off slowly into the thicker bush, and this is exactly what we want. The more vegetation we can have between us and the animal, the better, as this not only hides our approach, but could also allow us to take a shot from a little bit closer. So we can, we've given the sable about 20 minutes, and it's walking off as planned, luckily, into the thickets. And uh, the output chances getting within bow range is a lot better. So we just want to get through this open area without it spotting us, waiting for it to move in, and then we'll track it from there. The sable's about 200 meters away from us at this point, and we have to close this distance to about 40 meters in order to take an ethical shot. The difficulty though is that there isn't much cover, and so we have to crawl in on our hands and knees, and this isn't very comfortable, especially when you're carrying a bow, or in my case, a camera. Thankfully, the wind is in our favor, so there's no chance of the animal smelling us, but remaining unseen is difficult enough in itself, and it's a slow process. We are within 140 yards of the sable. It's, 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 a, it's a challenge to get within bow range, and uh, we we're making the best of it and giving it our all, hands and knees, here we go. Eventually we get within 60 yards, but unfortunately the sable is now lying down, facing directly towards us, so moving closer is not really an option. Our only chance is to wait it out and hope that he decides to walk closer and turn broadside. Either wait it out or get closer. And um, if we wait it out, we have room to make a mistake and we step our way. It doesn't help about us anymore. So we spend the best part of the last uh, two hours um, putting in the store, closing the distance. We did over 200 yards in two hours, which is good when you're bow hunting and on your hands and knees. These came in handy. The slightest movement um, got us detected and uh, spooked off. And that's hunting, that's why we do it. We're making it harder than it's supposed to be uh, with a bow and arrow. And we're giving the animal the, the fair chance of spotting us first. And uh, it's a cat and mouse game. And uh, Sable one, hunters zero. After a really challenging start to the day, we take a break to head back to the lodge, refuel with some coffee, and we are served a delicious breakfast, which always tastes better after crawling on your hands and knees for a few hours. It's not long before we back out in the bush though, and by this time, with the temperature starting to climb, the animals are everywhere. We spot some beautiful waterbuck bulls and kudu bulls, but as the hunting often goes, the species that we're after is nowhere to be seen. Finally though, as the afternoon looks like it's about to slip away, we spot what we're looking for and we're back to strategizing the stalk. We see the bull move over a hill and we move slowly through the red sand, hoping we'll surprise him on the other side. But alas, we peek our heads over the top only to find him hundreds of yards away and in no mood to stop. So we put in a stalk on a sable, a different sable bull, beautiful bull. And uh, um, so it was just, we dropped off in rocks. Um, couldn't work our, work our way through the rocks without making enough, to, uh, little enough noise. And so we ran and uh, followed him into the dunes. And we got picked over the dune and he's already a kilometer away. So Sable 2, Hunters 0. You may call it an unsuccessful day, but a day out in the bush is always better than a day stuck behind a desk in an office, so none of us are complaining. Dupi is on bride duty, and pretty soon we're ready to eat up and get an early night. With only one more day left to hunt, the pressure's on, and we're ready to pull out all the stops, and maybe even change plans a little bit. 
Let's see how the next day plays out. It's our last day at Nua Sanaba's safaris in Namibia and the mood is tense in the camp as we prepare to head out. We had spent the whole of the previous day trying to walk and stalk a sable bull with a bow but after a number of failed attempts and two spooked animals we decide to turn to plan B. Southern Africa has been experiencing some really bad droughts over the past few months and with the dry weather and lack of available food many farms have needed to cull animals to prevent overgrazing. This in turn has left the animals very wild and so trying to get within bow range is not very easy. It would be a waste of time to come all the way out here and go home empty handed so we decide last minute to switch to the rifle and after an early breakfast we head to the range for a quick zero check. With the scope zeroed in nicely we head straight back out this time with Reg behind the camera and myself behind the rifle. The land here is much flatter than what I'm used to back home so sometimes you have to put in some extra effort in order to find a good vantage point. Reg climbs up a tree, glasses all around for about 10 minutes and eventually spots a herd of eland. We put on a bit of a stalk, get within range but unfortunately none of them stop in a gap and there just aren't any opportunities to take an ethical shot. After a whole morning of things not going our way, the plan finally comes together as we come across a nice big herd of water buck that seem very calm and we begin to stalk in close. We've just seen a, a whole herd of water buck down that way um, and it looks like they're quite calm so we, we might have a really good opportunity on them. Um, Reg is going to lead me in, he's the, he's the PH here, he knows what he's doing and we're going to try to get close enough where I can get a good standing shot on the sticks. Hopefully they stay nice and calm, but it looks like we might be, might be in for a good chance. So let's head that way and see what we can do. Then we just saw the horns of the bull moving past. So hopefully the bull moves into a clearing where we can get a nice clean shot on it. Suddenly it's all going down as the water buck bull stops in a gap right in front of us and I prepared to take a shot. really nice waterbuck bull. I think I put him in a pretty good shot. The wind's quite strong from my left here. Um, yeah, but I think it's a good shot. I didn't see where the impact was because I was quite zoomed in. But I think he's going to go down. Really happy. It's been a it's been a, a tough couple days. Um, we've been we've been at it really hard. We were at it all day yesterday with the bow. Got really 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 close. Um, it's nice to finally take a shot and, and hear that impact and and hopefully we've, we've put in a good shot so let's go take a look and, and see how it turned out. Perfect. This is definitely definitely bigger than the the one I've shot previously. I have actually shot one water buck before in South Africa but that was a management hunt and this is definitely a really nice big trophy. You can see the body's big Horns are big. Oh, I'm, I'm just overjoyed. That's really, really cool. Well, after a very enjoyable, but also very difficult day and a half of hunting where we had some really, really good opportunities, but animals just got away from us. Um, we managed to go out today with, with the rifle and get this monster water buck down. I mean, this is a, a beautiful, beautiful trophy. It's not the first water buck I've shot, but it's, a, it's definitely the biggest. Um, we're, we're looking around for animals the whole morning, you know, headed out again in the afternoon and just got an opportunity on a, on a water buck, uh, a herd of water buck that looked quite relaxed. Reg and I set up, Reg led me in beautifully and was able to take a, a standing shot on the sticks from about 120, 130 meters. Um, 
put it down, ran about 150 meters or so, and then dropped down dead. Um, so really, really happy. Um, I was using the Ticker T3 uh, CTR. Um, I'm, I'm used to shooting a Ticker, so this is Reg's rifle, but I felt really comfortable behind it. Have a, a Night Force NXS on top, which is, again, the, a, a brand of scope that I'm very used to. And nice compact gun, really nice to come out and hunt with. This one's in, in 308, so good, good hunting package. Really great to be in Namibia for the first time. Uh, it's just, you know, something that everyone dreams of to come out and hunt in Namibia. So it's really good to be out here. And we've still got a few hours, so we're going to head straight out again and, and see if we can get something else down. Really, really happy. Not wanting to let any opportunities go to waste, we dropped Dupi and Lozano for two different blinds on the opposite side of the farm, hoping that they'll get opportunities with the bow before the end of the day. Reg and I keep on walking, covering quite a lot of ground in search of another animal, and at this point it really is about taking opportunities. We're grateful to be able to have one animal down, but it would be really great to get another before the end of the day. I'm hoping to find either a red hartebeest or a chemsbuck, two species that I haven't had the opportunity to hunt yet, and suddenly, out of nowhere, I get my chance as a chemsbuck appears right in front of me. Chemsbuck down. That's like the classic, classic Namibian animal. So I'm really, really glad I got that. If there was one animal I could choose to shoot here, it would be the Chemsbuck. So I'm, I'm so happy with that. And um, she really did not go far, maybe 20 meters. So good shot. Let's go check it out. Well, our hunting here at Noah Sanibus just got even more interesting. We were almost about to call it a day there when I, I shot that water buck. Um, it was, you know, a fantastic moment for me. But, you know, running out of light, we weren't sure how, how things were going to go. But um, kept on moving, kept on taking chances. We put on a few stalks on some earlunt. Uh, unfortunately, those were, you know, they saw us and they ran off and we, they, we couldn't get within a few hundred meters of them. Really tough. And that's how hunting goes. Sometimes it doesn't work out. But um, came, came out here and, and saw these uh, chemsbuck, which is like the classic Namibian species, within range. We set up and things happened very quickly. Made a perfect shot, ran maybe 30 to 50 meters and then just you saw it get a bit wheezy and then just fell straight down. So extremely happy with that. You know, to be out here in, in beautiful Namibia and get the classic Namibian animal, you don't get better than that. Um, yeah, we were hoping to, to get some stuff down with the bow. Reg Grant, who's um, behind the camera right now, a good friend of mine, he um, organized this hunt, invited me out here, and the plan was to get some bow hunting done, but, you know, running out of time, we decided last minute to switch the rifle. It would have been nice to get stuff done with the bow, but that's just how it goes. Um, but yeah, uh, it's been a real privilege to come out here, and, and I would not have wished for a better day than this. With the Chemspuck loaded up onto the truck and on its way to the cold room, we do the good old switcheroo once again and are back behind the camera. Reg is keen to get something down for himself after guiding Luzon and I for two days and he gets one or two good opportunities. We spot a hood of Irland which just get away from us before a group of red hartebeest pull up right in front of us. So we just got the Rara to be perfectly iconic animal of Namibia and uh, there was a young one behind a beautiful bull. I would have loved to 
shoot a Red Hot Beast. I've never actually shot a Red Hot Beast myself. I've guided a lot of clients on them. And this was a dream to shoot one. But the ethical choice was to not just shoot it and uh, possibly uh, injuring and not putting a perfect shot in on the animal behind it. So we left it and, and that's hunting. We've had a great time. Matt has shot some awesome animals. Luzon did the utmost, my loving wife, they tried to be, her best to shoot the sable with a bow and the conditions was against us. Against us. The wind was howling, um, animals were more skittish with the wind, the way it was. What an awesome experience and just thankful for being able to be here in this beautiful country. I want to thank the guys from Nosanobus for allowing us to be here and hunt with them and um, just uh, opening their the house and their hearts to us. It's really been an awesome experience. Always nice with Matt Dubber, my friend behind the camera. And uh, yeah, just enjoying the beauty of the country. Not always having to shoot something to have a great time. Um, it was so close, it was within range. Rifle is dialed in perfect. We were able to dial the rifle in to 300 yards and um, it just didn't work out. That's hunting. With the sun starting to go down, we call it a day and decide to go fetch Dupi from the blind and he is full of smiles. So I was sitting in the height. Uh, obviously the wind is very difficult today. Uh, it is not playing along um, and uh, as the sun was setting I thought uh, nothing was going to come in and uh, when I was about to get up I heard a noise just behind me and it was full flakvark and I thought they were coming to eat but they were actually coming in to drink and I was so nervous and <laughs> and um, took a deep breath and uh, when the one was standing on his front legs uh, drinking was between 20 and 30 yards uh, I just lined up nicely and let the arrow fly so hoping we can find it quickly Good stuff. Congratulations. I, I trust you're going to find it quickly. Rage in the cage. Rage tripen perf did its job perfectly. Blood looks good. They're bleeding out both sides, so beautiful. Oof. <laughs> Congratulations! Well Thank done. you very Ooh. much. That's a beautiful pig. <laughs> wow! 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 <laughs> hey, tell us about it. So tell us about your. This was an amazing experience. So the, like I said, the pig was drinking water and uh, it was between 20 and 30 yards so I lined up between my 20 and 30 yard pin and just let the rage fly and do its magic and you were using the new triax you uh... yeah the Matthew triax this is my first kill with the Matthew triax <laughs> and it's a fantastic <laughs> feeling man yeah, you, your bow before this was a, a BTX. It was a Bowtech BTX. Yeah, yes. and, you, and you enjoyed that a lot. And then yes, you 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 said you'll go over to the dark side a bit and try the Matthew Strikes. And I'm loving it. And every moment, it's very smooth. And uh, obviously, I'm very fond of the rages. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was a fantastic experience. Congratulations, man! Excellent. Well, we had a tough start to our hunting trip, but in the end, with three animals down. I think we were quite successful. We load the warthog into the truck and head back home just as the sun sets. Once again, it's one of those bittersweet nights where you're happy with the day's events, but disappointed that you have to head back home in the morning. We make a fire outside, share a few stories, enjoy each other's company, and of course, throw some meat on the bra. A fantastic few days of hunting at Noah Sanibus comes to an end, and we head to bed under a bright Namibian sky with happy hearts and freezers full of meat. <laughs>